The rapture is an eschatological term used by certain Christians, particularly within branches of North American evangelicalism, referring to an end-time event when all Christian believers, living and dead, will rise into heaven and join Christ. Some adherents believe this event is predicted and described in Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians in the Bible, where he uses the Greek harpazo, harpazo meaning to snatch away or seize. Though it has been used differently in the past, the term is now often used by certain believers to distinguish this particular event from the second coming of Jesus Christ to earth mentioned in 2 Thessalonians, Gospel of Matthew, 1 Corinthians, and Revelation, usually viewing it as preceding the second coming and followed by a thousand-year millennial kingdom. Adherents of this perspective are sometimes referred to as premillennialist dispensationalist, but amongst them there are differing viewpoints about the exact timing of the event. The term rapture is especially useful in discussing or disputing the exact timing or the scope of the event, particularly when asserting the pre-tribulation view that the rapture will occur before, not during, the second coming, with or without an extended tribulation period. The term is most frequently used among Christian theologians and fundamentalist Christians in the United States. Other, older uses of rapture were simply as a term for any mystical union with God or for eternal life in heaven with God. There are differing views among Christians regarding the timing of Christ's return, such as whether it will occur in one event or two, and the meaning of the aerial gathering described in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Many Christians do not subscribe to rapture oriented theological views. Though the term, rapture, is derived from the text of the Latin Vulgate of 1 Thess, 417, we will be caught up, Latin, rapimer, Catholics, as well as Eastern Orthodox, Anglicans, Lutherans and most Reformed Christians, do not generally use, rapture, as a specific theological term, nor do any of these bodies subscribe to the premillennialist dispensationalist theological views associated with its use, but do believe in the phenomenon, Primarily in the sense of the elect gathering with Christ in heaven after his second coming, these denominations do not believe that a group of people is left behind on earth for an extended tribulation period after the events of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17. Pre-tribulation rapture theology originated in the 18th century, with the Puritan preachers Increase and Cotton Mather, and was popularized extensively in the 1830s by John Nelson Darby and the Plymouth Brethren, and further in the United States by the wide circulation of the Schofield Reference Bible in the early 20th century. Some, including Grant Jeffrey, maintain that an earlier document called Ephraim or Pseudo-Ephraim already supported a pre-tribulation rapture. Topic. Etymology Rapture is derived from Middle French rapture, via the medieval Latin raptura, seizure, kidnapping, which derives from the Latin raptus, a carrying off. Topic. Greek The Koine Greek of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 uses the verb form harpagesomtha, harpagesomtha, which means, we shall be caught up, or taken away, with the connotation that this is a sudden event. The dictionary form of this Greek verb is harpazo. harpazo. This use is also seen in such texts as Acts chapter 8 verse 39, 2 Corinthians 12 2-4 and Revelation chapter 12 verse 5. Topic. Latin The Latin Vulgate translates the Greek harpage sumtha as rapimer meaning, we are caught up, or we are taken away, from the Latin verb rapio meaning, to catch up, or take away. Topic. English Bible translations English versions of the Bible have expressed the concept of rapimer in various ways. The Wycliffe Bible 1395, translated from the Latin Vulgate, uses rushed. The Tyndale New Testament 1525, the Bishop's Bible 1568, the Geneva Bible 1587, and the King James Version 1611 use caught up. The Online Net Bible 1995 to 2005 translates the Greek of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 using the phrase suddenly caught up with the footnote or snatched up the Greek verb harpazo implies that the action is quick or forceful so the translation supplied the adverb suddenly to make this implicit notion clear 
Topic: <laughs> Doctrinal position. The Roman Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Church, the Anglican Communion, Lutheranism and many Protestant Calvinist denominations, have no tradition of a preliminary return of Christ. The Orthodox Church, for example, rejects a preliminary return because it depends on a premillennial interpretation of prophetic scriptures, rather than an amillennial or postmillennial fashion. Views <laughs> 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 Tenets Those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who are dead. 1 Thess 4.15 The dead in Christ will resurrect first. 1 Thess 4.16 The living and the resurrected dead will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thess 4.17 The rapture will occur during the parousia. Those who are alive and remain unto the coming parousia in Greek of the Lord, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air." 1 Thess 4.15-17 The meeting with the Lord will be permanent. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thess 4.17 One or two events Most premillennialists divide the rapture and second coming into two events. Some dispensationalist premillennialists including many evangelicals hold the return of Christ to be two distinct events, or one second coming in two stages. According to them 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15-17 is seen to be a description of a preliminary event to the return described in Matthew 24 verses 29-31. Although both describe a coming of Jesus, these are seen to be different events. The first event is a coming where the saved are to be caught up, once the term rapture is taken. The second event is described as the second coming. The majority of dispensationalists hold that the first event precedes the period of tribulation, even if not immediately see chart for additional dispensationalist timing views. Amillennialists deny the interpretation of a literal 1,000-year rule of Christ, and as such amillennialism does not necessarily imply much difference between itself and other forms of millennialism besides that denial. However, there is considerable overlap in the beliefs of amillennialists including most Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, Anglicans, and Lutherans, postmillennialists including Presbyterians, and historic premillennialists including some Calvinistic Baptists, among others with those who hold that the return of Christ will be a single, public event. Those who identify the rapture with the second coming are likely to emphasize mutual similarities between passages of scripture where clouds, trumpets, angels or the archangel, resurrection, and gathering are mentioned. Although some, particularly some amillennialists, may take the rapture to be figurative, rather than literal, these three groups are likely to maintain that the passages regarding the return of Christ describe a single event. Some proponents believe the doctrine of amillennialism originated with Alexandrian scholars such as Clement and Origen and later became Catholic dogma through Augustine. Topic: <laughs> Destination. Dispensationalists see the immediate destination of the raptured Christians as being heaven. Roman Catholic commentators, such as Walter Drum 1912, identify the destination of the 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 gathering as heaven, while Anglicans have many views, some Anglican commentators, such as N.T. Wright, identify the destination as a specific place on earth. This interpretation may sometimes be connected to Christian environmentalist concerns. Topic. Views of eschatological timing According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 to 17 and Matthew chapter 24 verses 37 to 40 the rapture would occur in the parousia of the Lord where the Greek parousia is used to describe the events in the amillennial and postmillennial views there are no distinctions in the timing of the rapture these views regard the rapture as it is described in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 15 to 17 would be identical to the second coming of Jesus as described in Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 to 31 after a symbolic millennium. In the premillennial view, the rapture would be before a literal millennium. Within the premillennialism, the pre-tribulation position is the predominant view that distinguishes between the rapture and second coming as two different events. 
There are also other positions within premillennialism that differ with regard to the timing of the rapture. Topic: <laughs> Premillennialist views. Though the Catholic Church does not generally regard biblical prophecy in texts such as Daniel and Revelation as strictly future-based when viewed from the standpoint of our present time, in 1590 Francisco Ribera, a Catholic Jesuit, taught futurism. The idea that most of Revelation is about the imminent future rather than containing certain prophecies that were already fulfilled in the early years of the Church. He also taught that a gathering of the elect event similar to what is now called the rapture would happen 45 days before the end of a 3.5-year tribulation. The concept of the rapture, in connection with premillennialism, was expressed by the 17th-century American Puritans Increase and Cotton Mather. They held to the idea that believers would be caught up in the air, followed by judgments on earth, and then the millennium. Other 17th-century expressions of the rapture are found in the works of, Robert Matton, Nathaniel Holmes, John Brown, Thomas Vincent, Henry Danvers, and William Sherwin. The term rapture was used by Philip Doddridge and John Gill in their New Testament commentaries, with the idea that believers would be caught up prior to judgment on earth and Jesus' second coming. Dr. Samuel Prado Tregels (1813–1875), a prominent English theologian and biblical scholar, wrote a pamphlet in 1866 tracing the concept of the rapture through the works of John Darby back to Edward Irving. An 1828 edition of Matthew Henry's An Exposition of the Old and New Testament uses the word "rapture" in explicating one these 417, although not using the term "rapture." The idea was more fully developed by Edward Irving 1792 to 1834. In 1825, Irving directed his attention to the study of prophecy and eventually accepted the one-man antichrist idea of James Henthorne Todd, Samuel Rafi Maitland, Robert Bellarmine, and Francisco Ribera, yet he went a step further. Irving began to teach the idea of a two-phase return of Christ, the first phase being a secret rapture prior to the rise of the antichrist. Edward Miller described Irving's teaching like this, "...there are three gatherings, first, of the first fruits of the harvest, the wise virgins who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, next, the abundant harvest gathered afterwards by God, and lastly, the assembling of the wicked for punishment." <laughs> Pre-tribulational premillennialism The pre-tribulation position advocates that the rapture will occur before the beginning of a seven-year tribulation period, while the second coming will occur at the end of it. Pre-tribulationists often describe the rapture as Jesus coming for the church and the second coming as Jesus coming with the church. Pre-tribulation educators and preachers include Jimmy Swaggart, J. Dwight Pentecost, Tim Lahey, J. Vernon McGee, Perry Stone, Chuck Smith, Hal Lindsey, Jack Van Imp, Chuck Missler, Grant Jeffrey, Thomas Ice, David Jeremiah, John F. MacArthur, and John Hagee. While many pre-tribulationists are also dispensationalist, not all pre-tribulationists are dispensationalist. John Nelson Darby first proposed and popularized the pre-tribulation rapture in 1827. This view was accepted among many other Plymouth Brethren movements in England. Darby and other prominent Brethren were part of the Brethren movement which impacted American Christianity, especially with movements and teachings associated with Christian eschatology and fundamentalism, primarily through their writings. Influences included the Bible Conference movement, starting in 1878 with the Niagara Bible Conference. These conferences, which were initially inclusive of historicist and futurist premillennialism, led to an increasing acceptance of futurist premillennial views and the pre-tribulation rapture especially among Presbyterian, Baptist, and Congregational members. Popular books also contributed to acceptance of the pre-tribulation rapture, including William E. Blackstone's book Jesus is Coming, published in 1878, which sold more than 1.3 million copies, and the Schofield Reference Bible, published in 1909 and 1919 and revised in 1967. Some pre-tribulation proponents, such as Grant Jeffrey, maintain that the earliest known extra-biblical reference to the pre-tribulation rapture is from a 7th-century tract known as the Apocalypse of Pseudo-Ephraim the Syrian. Different authors have proposed several different versions of the Ephraim text as authentic and there are differing opinions as to whether it supports belief in a pre-tribulation rapture. One version of the text reads, For all the saints and elect of God are gathered, 
prior to the tribulation that is to come, and are taken to the Lord lest they see the confusion that is to overwhelm the world because of our sins." There exists at least one 18th century and two 19th century pre tribulation references. In an essay published in 1788 in Philadelphia by the Baptist Morgan Edwards, which articulated the concept of a pre tribulation rapture, in the writings of Catholic priest Manuel Lacunza in 1812, and by John Nelson Darby in 1827. Manuel Lacunza, a Jesuit priest under the pseudonym Juan Josaphat ben Ezra, wrote an apocalyptic work entitled La Venida del Messias en Gloria y Majestad The Coming of the Messiah in Glory and Majesty. The book appeared first in 1811, ten years after his death. In 1827, it was translated into English by the Scottish minister Edward Irving. The rise in belief in the pre tribulation rapture is often wrongly attributed to a 15 year old Scottish Irish girl named Margaret MacDonald who was of the first to receive a spiritual baptism under a Pentecostal awakening in Scotland. In 1830, she supposedly had a vision of the end times which describes a post tribulation view of the rapture that was first published in 1840. It was published again in 1861, but two important passages demonstrating a post-tribulation view were removed to encourage confusion concerning the timing of the rapture. The two removed segments were, "...this is the fiery trial which is to try us, it will be for the purging and purifying of the real members of the body of Jesus," and, "...the trial of the Church is from Antichrist. It is by being filled with the Spirit that we shall be kept." During the 1970s, belief in the rapture became popular in wider circles, in part because of the books of Hal Lindsey, including the late great planet Earth, which has reportedly sold between 15 million and 35 million copies, and the movie A Thief in the Night, which based its title on the scriptural reference 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2. Lindsay proclaimed that the rapture was imminent, based on world conditions at the time. In 1995, the doctrine of the pre tribulation rapture was further popularized by Tim Lahaye's Left Behind series of books, which sold tens of millions of copies and was made into several movies and four real time strategy video games. <laughs> Mid tribulational premillennialism The mid-tribulation position espouses that the rapture will occur at some point in the middle of what is popularly called the tribulation period, or during Daniel's 70th week. The tribulation is typically divided into two periods of 3.5 years each. Mid-tribulationists hold that the saints will go through the first period beginning of travail, but will be raptured into heaven before the severe outpouring of God's wrath in the second half of what is popularly called the Great Tribulation. Mid-tribulationists appeal to Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 which says the saints will be given over to tribulation for time, times, and half a time, interpreted to mean 3.5 years. At the halfway point of the tribulation, the Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation by desecrating the Jerusalem temple. Mid-tribulationist teachers include Harold Akenga, James O. Buswell, a reformed, Calvinistic Presbyterian, and Norman Harrison. This position is a minority view among premillennialists. Topic: <inaudible> Prerath premillennialism. The prerath rapture view also places the rapture at some point during the tribulation period before the second coming. This view holds that the tribulation of the church begins toward the latter part of a 7-year period, being Daniel's 70th week, when the antichrist is revealed in the temple. This latter half of a seven-year period i.e. three and a half years is defined as the Great Tribulation, although the exact duration is not known. References from Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, and Luke chapter 21 are used as evidence that this tribulation will be cut short by the coming of Christ to deliver the righteous by means of the rapture, which will occur after specific events in Revelation, in particular after the sixth seal is opened and the sun is darkened and the moon is turned to blood. However, by this point many Christians will have been slaughtered as martyrs by the Antichrist. After the rapture will come God's seventh seal wrath of trumpets and bowls a.k.a. the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord's wrath against the ungodly will follow for the remainder of seven years. <laughs> Partial pre-tribulation premillennialism 
The partial, conditional or selective rapture theory holds that all obedient Christians will be raptured before the Great Tribulation depending on one's personal fellowship or closeness between she or he and God, which is not to be confused with the relationship between the same and God which is believer, regardless of fellowship, therefore, it is believed by some that the rapture of a believer is determined by the timing of his conversion before the Great Tribulation. Other proponents of this theory hold that only those who are faithful in their relationship with God having true fellowship with Him will be raptured, and the rest resurrected during the Great Tribulation, between the fifth and sixth seals of Revelation, having lost their lives during. Still others hold the rest will either be raptured during the Tribulation or at its end. As stated by Ira David, a proponent of this view, the saints will be raptured in groups during the Tribulation as they are prepared to go. Some notable proponents of this theory are G. H. Lang, Robert Chapman, G. H. Pember, Robert Govett, D. M. Panton, Watchman Ney, Ira E. David, J. A. Sice, Hudson Taylor, Anthony Norris Groves, John Wilkinson, G. Campbell Morgan, Otto Stockmeyer and Rev. J. W. Chip White, Jr. <laughs> Post-tribulational premillennialism In the post-tribulation premillennial position, the rapture would be identical to the second coming of Jesus or as a meeting in the air with Jesus that immediately precedes his return to the earth before a literal millennium. The post-tribulation position places the rapture at the end of the tribulation period. Post-tribulation writers define the tribulation period in a generic sense as the entire present age, or in a specific sense of a period of time preceding the second coming of Christ. The emphasis in this view is that the church will undergo the tribulation. Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 they shall gather together his elect. Is cited as a foundational scripture for this view. Post tribulationists perceive the rapture as occurring simultaneously with the second coming of Christ. Upon Jesus' return, believers will meet him in the air and will then accompany him in his return to the earth. In the epistles of Paul, most notably in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 to 17, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 to 52, a trumpet is described as blowing at the end of the tribulation to herald the return of Christ. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 further supports this view. Moreover, after chapters 6 to 19 and after 20 to 1 minus 3, when Satan is bound, Revelation chapter 20 verses 4 to 6 says, "And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection." Authors and teachers who support the post-tribulational view include Pat Robertson, Walter R. Martin, John Piper, George E. Ladd, Robert H. Gundery, and Douglas Moo. Non-premillennialist views Postmillennialism In the postmillennialism view the millennium is seen as an indefinitely long time thus precluding literal interpretation of a thousand-year period. According to Lorraine Boatner, "...the world will be Christianized, and the return of Christ will occur at the close of a long period of righteousness and peace, commonly called the millennium." Postmillennialists commonly view the rapture of the Church as one and the same event as the second coming of Christ. According to them the Great Tribulation was already fulfilled in the Jewish-Roman War of 66–73 AD that involved the destruction of Jerusalem. Authors who have expressed support for this view include the Puritan author of Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan, Jonathan Edwards and Charles Finney. Amillennialism <laughs> <laughs> Amillennialists view the millennial rule of Christ as the current, but indefinite period that began with the foundation of the Church and that will end with the Second Coming—a period where Christ already reigns with his saints through the Eucharist and his Church. They view the life of the Church as Christ's kingdom already established inaugurated on the day of the Pentecost described in the first chapter of Acts, but not to be made complete until his Second Coming. This framework precludes a literal interpretation of the thousand-year period mentioned in chapter 20 of Revelation, viewing the number thousand as numerologically symbolic and pertaining to the current age of the Church. Amillennialists generally do not use 
rapture as a theological term, but they do view the event as coinciding with the second coming, primarily as a mystical gathering with Christ. To amillennialists the final days already began on the day of the Pentecost, but that the Great Tribulation will occur during the final phase or conclusion of the millennium, with Christ then returning as the Alpha and Omega at the end of time. Unlike premillennialists who predict the millennium as a literal thousand-year reign by Christ after his return, amillennialists emphasize the continuity and permanency of his reign throughout all periods of the New Covenant, past, present and future. They do not regard mentions of Jerusalem in the chapter 21 of Revelation as pertaining to the present geographical city, but to a future New Jerusalem or New Heaven and New Earth, for which the Church through the Twelve Apostles representing of the Twelve Tribes of Israel currently lays the foundation in the Messianic Kingdom already present. Unlike certain premillennial dispensationalists, they do not view the rebuilding of the Temple of Jerusalem as necessary, because it has already been established in the life of the Church through Christ's ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Authors who have expressed support for this view include St. Augustine. The amillennialist viewpoint is the position held by the Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, and Anglican churches, as well as mainline Protestant bodies, such as Lutherans, Methodists, Presbyterians and many Reformed congregations. Topic. Date Since the origin of the concept, many believers in the rapture have made predictions regarding the date of the event. The primary biblical reference cited against this position is Matthew chapter 24 verses 36-37, where Jesus is quoted as saying about his parousia, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming parousia of the Son of Man be. RSV, also in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10, it says the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. See also 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2. Another potential problem for those attempting to set a date for the rapture arises from Matthew chapter 24 verse 34, where Jesus is quoted as saying, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, till all these things be fulfilled. KJV Any individual or religious group that has dogmatically predicted the day of the rapture, a practice referred to as, date setting has been thoroughly embarrassed and discredited, as the predicted date of fulfillment has invariably come and gone without event. Some of these individuals and groups have offered correct target dates, while others have offered excuses and have tried to correct their target dates, while simply releasing a reinterpretation of the meaning of the scripture to fit their current predicament, and then explain that although the prediction appeared to have not come true, in reality it had been completely accurate and fulfilled, albeit in a different way than many had expected. Conversely, many of those who believe that the precise date of the rapture cannot be known, do affirm that the specific time frame that immediately precedes the rapture event can be known. This time frame is often referred to as the season. The primary section of scripture cited for this position is Matthew chapter 24 verses 32 to 35, where Jesus is quoted teaching the parable of the fig tree, which is proposed as the key that unlocks the understanding of the general timing of the rapture, as well as the surrounding prophecies listed in the sections of scripture that precede and follow this parable. Topic: <laughs> Failed predictions. Some notable predictions of the date of the second coming of Jesus include the following 1844, William Miller predicted that Christ would return between March 21, 1843 and March 21, 1844, then revised his prediction, claiming to have miscalculated the Bible, to October 22, 1844. The realization that the predictions were incorrect resulted in the great disappointment. Miller's theology gave rise to the Advent movement. The Baha'is believe that Christ did return as Miller predicted in 1844, with the advent of the Bab, and numerous Miller-like prophetic predictions from many religions are given in William Sears' book, Thief in the Night. 1914, 1918, and 1925, various dates predicted for the second coming of Jesus by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Some notable predictions of the date of the rapture include the following. 1978, Chuck Smith predicted that Jesus would probably return by 1981. 1988, Edgar C. Wissonant published a book called 
88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Be in 1988 1994, Radio Evangelist Harold Camping predicted September 6, 1994. 2011, Harold Camping's revised prediction put May 21, 2011 as the date of the rapture. After this date passed without apparent incident, Camping made a radio broadcast stating that a non-visible, spiritual judgment, had indeed taken place, and that the physical rapture would occur on October 21, 2011. On that date, according to Camping, the whole world will be destroyed. 2017 September 23, Christian numerologist David Mead motivated this date with astrological theories. Topic. See also Bible prophecy Covenantalism Eschatology of Jehovah's Witnesses Number of the Beast Rapture Ready Unfulfilled Christian Religious Predictions Topic. References Topic. External links Media related to prophecy of the rapture at Wikimedia Commons